Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us back at the Project Censored radio show. We're very glad now to be joined by Dr. Rose Brewer, who's a distinguished teaching professor at the Department of African American and African Studies at the University of Minnesota and a member of the Black Alliance for Peace's Africa team. Dr. Brewer, thanks so much for joining us. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting Absolutely. Uh, you know, here at the at the project, we specialize in, in media literacy. And with regards to uh, the the recent U.S. Africa Leaders Summit that happened in mid December, uh, and indeed with regards to just U.S. imperialism in Africa in general, there is a considerable cavern of misinformation and straight up lack of information, uh, which is why I'm very glad that you're here uh, to start off. I wanted to highlight the absurd framing of this summit as anything likening even ground when the United States military occupies 53 of the 54 countries on the continent in one form of, of, or another. Could you uh, start us off by adjusting this framing of the summit to what it was legitimately about? That's a very important uh, question and your lead in is significant. Um, I am certain that uh, the whole history of U.S. meddling in Africa is not well understood, but it's a long and deep and miserable one. And how dare them frame this gathering with those words with not a peep about the long history of colonialism, neocolonialism, imperialism uh, by the U.S., by uh, its allies in Europe, by NATO, it's incredible uh, in, in terms of the willingness to uh, obfuscate and to uh, really erase something that is going on in, to the present time. So I guess you could say it's just um, egoism, uh, don't care, um, hubris, whatever you wanna call it, it's not the truth. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I, I wanted to sort of zero in on that, uh, on on that, well, the history and the present as well. Uh, speaking about the leaders that were present at this summit, uh, because as the Black Alliance for Peace noted in a in a recent press release, quote, African independence movements since the 1950s have been destabilized by U.S. administrations of both parties, uh, and so. I take it there's no one like a Patrice Lumumba invited to this summit. Uh, so could you talk about a little bit who, about who's inv who was invited uh, and who was purposefully left out? Indeed, indeed. Certainly uh, no one like the assassinated uh, Lumumba. Uh, definitely Eritrea wasn't in the room. It's charted a independent space uh, for a long time now, uh, persona non grata. Uh, for the U.S. Um, the sanctions against Zimbabwe have been very intense. Uh, my understanding is there might have been some kind of representation, but there wasn't an invitation. Um, so there were 49 countries there. Uh, and uh, one might say uh, handpicked. Uh, the language that BAP uses is, uh, you know, uh, we use misleadership class in this country to talk about uh, the uh, political class, the black political class in the US, but there is definitely uh, a neo-colonial class in, uh, on the continent that has been deeply complicit in many of these machinations by the US and um, handpicked, uh, I don't know if you use that word, but certainly selected uh, for the role they would be willing to play in this uh, in this uh, gathering. Right, and uh, I wanted to uh, dig into a little bit of uh, the, the meeting itself because uh, as USA Today reported, uh, quote, President Joe Biden announced new investments in Africa focused on boosting trade and infrastructure as his administration seeks to counter inroads that China and Russia have made in the continent, end quote. And that just sounds like straight up colonialists fighting over who gets parts of Africa. And it's actually quite reminiscent of the summit that was held in the late 1800s where European powers met to literally carve up Africa and just create countries out of nothing. Uh, 
shoving tribes that weren't uh, that hadn't lived together or splitting tribes just kind of willy nilly. Um, and it seems that the U.S. is using Africa as the stage of a proxy war against China and Russia. Uh, at this point, not a, an outright war uh, that, that's being fought in Africa uh, against China and Russia. But and th there doesn't seem to be a positive outcome in that for any of the the African uh, the African nations. So what does African independence in your mind look like in terms of throwing off imperialist meddling and being their own autonomous actors on a global stage? Well, that's certainly uh, the desire of uh, Black Alliance for Peace, that uh, that sovereignty and self-determination becomes possible. That is a deep political struggle. Um, and uh, indeed, I think your first remarks around uh, why this happened has everything to do with China, in particular, Russia to, to some extent. Uh, China, as you well know, has had uh, deep relationships with uh, the continent going back to the anti-colonial struggles uh, and supported those struggles, whereas the US was on the wrong side of that and actually uh, worked against uh, the liberation of the continent. Uh, tremendous pressure from uh, revolutionaries all over the world uh, engaged in pushback. So there's no record uh, to stand on really in terms of uh, except uh, the narrow geopolitical economic financial interests uh, behind uh, the investments of China. Uh, somebody is deciding that uh, it's in their interest, as we, we said, to uh, secure uh, the southern flank of, of NATO, which uh, the continent represents. So um, the geopolitical realities, the um, imperial global capitalist realities are at the heart of this. And uh, the junior partners, uh, as they referred to in our press release, are part and part of the scenario uh, that's being plotted. And the investment is, uh, from what was noted, was $55 billion, which is a smittent of, uh, I think, China by 19, by 2021 had, had investments or bilateral investments of over $250 billion. I mean, and the question is whether or not uh, this money will ever be realized in any substantial sense of the word. It's on the table, uh, you know, a lot of talk. Uh, where's the action in terms of our demands, which uh, really, uh, really press for and uh, actually demand that AFRICOM, which is the uh, African uh, Command Committee, uh, Command uh military command on the continent be removed, that uh, closure of military bases uh, around uh, the world uh, and hands off of Africa. Now, if that's the starting point, that's a different conversation, but that's not, as you well know, not the starting point of this conversation. Um, and I wanted so to-, to, to right. Yeah, I was just going to say you're right in terms of uh, the nefarious presence because of the fragmentation, uh, the the number of uh, of military actions, uh, the number of you know we can go into uh, the horrific recent history, uh, Somalia, uh, in as a case in point, uh, drum. Uh, um, uh, drone uh, attacks are still happening there. Um, a number of um, other military uh, destabilizations in the using the frame of stopping terrorism, which has not stopped, but in fact has increased. Um, so, you know, we can go deep into the long history, uh, you know, the the decades, the centuries long history and bring it into the present time. And uh, that's the context in which um, we're trying to raise awareness around what's actually behind this and prepare for a resistance to it uh, with a, a special eye on the Congressional Black Caucus, which has uh, sponsored uh, by one of its members, uh, Gregory Meeks, House Bill 7311 called Countering Malign Russian Activities in, in Africa. 
So there are all kinds of machinations that are going on in this context. Absolutely. And I'd like to circle back to the, the Black Caucus in a moment, but I want to, because you mentioned AFRICOM, and I know that this is something that BAP focuses a, a lot of energy on. And I'd like to uh, I'd like to hear your comments about how these two things uh, these two things collide the the military aspect and then the of course the capitalist aspect of you know investments as if there are no strings attached. Can you talk a little bit about like what part does Africom play in all this? Well, a Africom is is central. Um, the history uh, began around two thousand and seven. Uh, with the idea that a military presence should be on the continent. It was uh, solidified in 2008. And now, as you mentioned, uh, 53 of the 54 countries have a military presence on the continent. Uh, so this is not an independent military initiative on the part of uh, the nations there. This is a U.S. centered uh, initiative training uh, uh, African uh, fighters uh, using uh, the military wherewithal to contain and control. And we like to make the connection between uh, that military presence on the continent and, for example, what's happening here in the U.S. with African peoples who are descendant of. Uh, Africans on the on the continent, the 1033 program, which entails the militarization of communities. Uh, police departments are able to buy weaponry util utilized and deployed in black and brown communities in, in the US. So there is a, a very deep interrelated connection between militarization on the continent, uh, African peoples here, and that uh, Pan-African linkage across the diasporas that uh, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, thank you for highlighting that, uh, Dr. Brewer. I think the it's always important to make the connection between imperialism uh, outside of the United States and inside and the continued um, <clears throat> the continued colonialism and uh, oppression of uh, black folks and people of African descent. And I wanted to, since you also mentioned the the Black Caucus and what's going on there, I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you what you expect and what you feel that you can push folks in Congress uh, to do with regards to Africom and with with regards to African independence. Well, remember the the week uh, mid December of uh, the summit, uh, Black Alliance for Peace uh, had a week long set of activities certainly political education awareness, but there were protest uh, resistance to uh, the frame as well as to the hardcore implications of, uh, of that gathering. And complicit in all of this, uh, whining and dining and what might be called side deals and other kinds of machinations were going on. The CEBC, uh, the Congressional Black Caucus, has played a incredibly horrific role in, in this process. The point is to put them on call to make it evident that uh, the representatives of, uh, of uh, the African descendant community in this country, and supposedly speaking more broadly, have done little or nothing, uh, have in fact uh, as I mentioned, supported uh, a House bill called Countering Malign Mushroom Activities in Africa. So the demand from BAP is to, uh, of course, oppose the uh, Africa Command, AFRICOM, and to conduct hearings on Africans, AFRICOM's impact on the African continent with full participation of members of the US and African civil society. So it's not just an inside game, opening it up to the people. Now, of course, that's a, a, a political uh, demand. It is an organizing demand, uh, but we, we know that people on the ground on the continent want something very different and uh, as well as uh, people in this society who are aware of uh, the impact of this.
So very explicit uh, kinds of demands. Closure of military bases, uh, eliminating 1033, um, and the uh, complete withdrawal of US forces uh, in Africa. So, yeah. <laughs> And and could you could you uh, speak a little bit more about this House bill? What is I mean? It sounds of course absurd, uh, but what is entailed in this bill? Well, you know, you you have to look at uh, the history recently, the last ten months, with um, the politicization uh, that's going on around who and what R Russia, uh, the Russian Federation represents. And um, on the continent, youth in particular, and others who have been very critical of the US position in Ukraine have definitely uh, lifted up uh, support for withdrawal and peace talks. And this of course, and a number voted against even having uh, US support of the war so you know the 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 politics of this go into that second wave of competition between uh, Russia and China. It's it's just a play to uh, politicize. Um, also, uh, there is a group called the Wagner Group uh, that's underpinning some of this. Uh, it's a Russian private entity that has been on the continent uh, and uh, that's a layer of the propaganda that's being entailed uh, in this particular uh, house bill. So it's all of a, of a whole in terms of uh, the political framing that this is not good for Africa. That was, I'm assuming, a part of the con conversation that went on at, at the summit as well as uh, the face of, the black face of imperialism, uh, not only uh, those who are a part of uh, the CBC, but also uh, Lord Austin, uh, Austin, who is the um, Secretary of Defense, uh, who <laughs> he, as well as Biden, uh, frame uh, not only uh, the conferences, uh, you know, uh, developing the relationships, the cordial relationships between the U.S. and the continent, but also uh, some stuff around democracy. And uh, Biden has uh, articulated several billion dollars to ensure free and democratic elections. Can you imagine that coming out of the lips of this country after what has been happened here? I, I mean, I mean. It, I it's even deeper than hypocrisy. It's just, it's, anyway, I, I don't know if I got into all of the aspects of it that you were interested in hearing about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and anytime uh, a U.S. president says the words democracy or freedom, I a, a little part of my soul gags. And um, I mean, it's just, it's it's disgusting. It's absolutely horrific, considering not just that the U.S. supports like 75 percent of the world's dictators, but then goes out of its way to ensure that democratically elected leaders are killed or at the very least removed. <laughs> well, I mean, that goes back to our earlier point around uh, the malign nature uh, of the history of this country on the continent when uh, the Soviet Union was supporting and, and China was supporting liberation struggles, uh, the CIA was murdering uh, Lumumba. Uh, it was removing Nkrumah from office. Uh, it supported South Africa uh, until, you know, the organizing here in this country uh, made them yield just a bit, but the practices have not, cons have not uh, shifted. And of course, at the center of it, the mineral riches of the continent, uh, the the need for those resources, uh, the financialization, the private holders of uh, of those of those uh, exploited uh, relations there, uh, capitalism, uh, financialization, 
those are at the center of so much of this, if not all of it. Uh, and of course, China breathing down the neck of the U.S. Uh, in this regard. Um, so yeah, uh, all of that is in play. Yeah, and I think it, I'm, I'm glad that you also mentioned China breathing down the neck because it it, it feels like as we continue to move forward and the U.S. Uh, continues to be as as Chris Chris has, has has written an empire in decline, it will lash out harder and harder and more violently. Uh, and with that, I'm curious, I mean, right now we there's a proxy war going on in Ukraine, of course, between uh, Russia and the United States. How do you see the the potentiality for such a thing happening in Africa, considering how much uh, of a of a hold the US military has on that and how scared it is of both Russia and China? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's serious business. Uh, and we should be very aware of uh, the increasing number of military conflicts on the continent since uh, AFRICOM has been there. Uh, the leaders of more recent coups were trained by U.S. military. Uh, there's been no destabilization of uh, so-called terrorist groups. In fact, those numbers have increased. And, uh, you know, uh, we make um, uh, we make connections to uh, activists on the ground on the continent who uh, are absolutely uh, committed to removing uh, that military presence because it is quite dangerous in the way that you've talked about it. And I, w I definitely want to lift up uh, the organizing and the political work that's going on on the continent. We can talk about the 49 leaders over here, but they're dealing with uh, a young population, a resistive population who absolutely is against uh, the neo-colonial machinations. And how to uh, deal with that is an ongoing issue because that group of youth and other organizations that have fought for decades are still there and will continue to resist. You know, our uh, point of connection is to make sure we're listening to uh, the voices on the ground, connecting with those and ensuring that uh, the African diaspora here uh, has a pan-African sensibility about the need for unity and connection. Uh, what's happening there has implications for what's happening here and vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and Dr. Brewer, with that, I, I wanted to wrap up by asking, how do you feel that folks can best organize with that in mind, uh, with with that listening to the folks on the ground in Africa and building that solidarity and those connections and networks? For sure. Uh, make sure that people have uh, access to uh, the many materials and documents that uh, BAP has produced, uh, informing, uh, raising awareness and I don't know if I mentioned the website, but it's Black Alliance for Peace, that's one word, dot com. And all of the materials, some of which I've referenced in our conversation, are available. Um, join an organization that has uh, that kind of political sensibility. Um, and um, making sure that the so-called elected representatives are held accountable. Uh, and that of course requires an awareness and understanding of the role they're playing in keeping the system intact in the way it is. You know, once upon a time under uh, old white supremacy, uh, the faces of it were, were white. Now the faces can be any color carrying out the the, the role of the empire. And of course, um, that's a whole nother conversation about how that operates and works. But information, education, uh, getting involved, uh, certainly perhaps joining BAP, uh, but um, our work is just, you know, beginning uh, in terms of the kind of organizing uh, 
and the connections that have to be made. It's a protracted struggle. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there. I, I can't remember who said it, but they said that there's no, there, there's no kind of uh, one and done winning against the forces of imperialism and colonialism. It is a, it is an ongoing struggle. Um, and uh, I also appreciate you uplifting the 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 contrast to old white supremacy because something that I've been that's been bothering me a lot recently is how people say, oh, well, you know, Zelensky can't be fascist. He's Jewish. And I'm like, wow, oh. OK, you know, <laughs> as, as a Jew myself, let me tell you, there are a lot of fascist Jews hey. and just look at Israel. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is a part of the opening of the minds thing uh, that. Yeah, well, anyway, you, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it is, uh, and I, and this is why these conversations are so important, um, and the work that the BAP does is so important because the programming that we receive in schools and even just in you know community discourses in the United States is very much like, you know, U.S. good. Uh, you know, those leaders that it topples in Africa or South America must be bad because the U.S. wouldn't ever. You know. Well, it's, you know, it's that kind of simplistic, uh, malicious framing. And we're fighting even greater battle, uh, battle here in terms of, uh, you know, white nationalism, which is banning books, which, uh, you know, uh, has distorted even greater than what is usual, the history. And uh, so there's that internal fight, uh, as well as the one that we've been talking about uh, internationally. And the best of the Black radical revolutionary tradition has always been internationalist. And that certainly is something that we want to uh, make patently clear that uh, you can't disconnect uh, what's happening here from what's happening globally. And especially uh, for those of us who are descendants of uh, Africa, uh, making those connections is absolutely imperative. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Boer. Uh, Brewer, is there anything else that you'd like to highlight that I may have missed in our conversation? Well, no, I think you've uh, lifted up uh, very critical points. Uh, keep an eye on uh, what's happening post uh, this, uh, this summit uh, and uh, stay connected to uh, the work on the ground what would be the two things I would uh, emphasize. Okay, well, thank you so much again, Dr. Brewer. I appreciate you taking the time. All right, thank you.